Welcome to 25 <laughs> Years in Rent Fandom. I am Melissa Anelli. I'm the CEO of Broadway Con, but much more importantly, I'm one of what I guess you would call the OG Rent Fandom from back in the 96, 97 era. It actually is the precursor to Broadway Con. It's how I met Anthony. It's how Broadway Con exists. So I'm moderating this panel, but I'm also gonna get to take part in this panel. Well, let me introduce you to my four lovely cohorts who um, <laughs> it's such a delight to see again. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order. So first we have Patrice Ferrangi. She is a eBay hustler or peddler slash bohemian. Uh, we also have with us, there are three Melissa's on this panel, just a warning, uh, Melissa Greco. <laughs> otherwise known to the Rent <laughs> fandom as Cyber Melly. Uh, she's worked in book publishing for 20 years now. She's currently a sales rep for Chronicle Books. Also with us, TK, otherwise known as Thomas King, otherwise known as Mama Nilla. He is an assistant professor in communication at theater at Southwest Tennessee Community College and the marketing director for the Recorded Acapella Review Board. And rounding out the Melissa gang, Melissa Poston. She's a children's and young adult buyer for the Novel Neighbor Bookstore. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hey. And, <laughs> and you were all 41st Street denizens in some way or another back in the day. Absolutely. And Rent has entered, entered its 25th year. It was actually 25 years ago that we were chilling on that one little step in front of Adina's portrait uh, at the Nederlander. So I first want to, would love to go around and hear from you all how you got into it. What was your intro to Rent fandom? I believe it was fall of 96 and the cast recording had launched and it was at a time that I was pretty much buying anything that I could find limited in whatever store. Uh, I'm in, I was in North Carolina at the time, now I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, and so North Carolina did not have the same resources that uh, New York City did. Uh, and so I picked up the CD, was listening to it, hated it, absolutely hated it. So I listened to, what is this mess? <laughs> <laughs> And um, so it was interesting because um, then that fall, my first ever trip to New York was with Eris. Um, we were both at UNC at the time. And she said, well, I could go up to my grandmother's house and we could go see the show. And this was right after Christmas. Um, and we did, we traveled the seven and a half hours slept on her grandmother's floor, walked from 72nd down to 41st, and sat. <laughs> we got in line, I think at, for that show, we were either the last in that line or the first for the next line, mm -hmm. if you remember that kind of transitional <laughs> moment. <laughs> Did, um, just to give some context for those who are watching who may not um, re remember back, this was before rushing was even a thing. Rent sort of really pushed the envelope on that. And it was when you could actually just wait in line for tickets as opposed to entering a lottery, which Rent also had to end because it got too popular. Right. Right. And so um, did you know any of the, like, the rules, the like one person staying in line and all, nothing? No, nothing when we got in. And there was, uh, a no I think we were, there was another uh, set of people from Canada, from Toronto, who were not dressed at all. They thought they were, but one of the dudes was in like this, uh, uh, not polyester, it was, what's the plastic? Pleather, kind of? The pleather, it was yeah. kind of like pleather, but it was even more so like just clear kind of plastic. Like the angel oh, costume? Like from... the, yes, he really like the angel. And so it was that. And uh, so... So we did, I, we did not know the rules except to just stay there, which was interesting and tough, but we did it. So uh, I did the cardinal sin though. Some people still are mad at me for this. I second acted before <laughs> I saw the whole show. Because second acting is okay, but only after you see the first show, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the whole show. show. This was my first, like, I saw the second act before I saw the whole show. 
because there were people oh, leaving, stupid people who were leaving. Right, right. That oh, happens all the time. Every okay. show, you could you could always second act somewhat legally yeah. by taking always. the ticket stub of an old person who was just disgusted and going home. <laughs> Y'all introduced me to second acting. Yeah, I, think so. I said that. Uh, Gilles was my mark, so he will always. Well, I won't say that out loud in case Anthony is listening to this. So Gilles will always be my favorite, but I do love Ant. It was. Uh, a magical moment and then I like I don't even know what else happened after that time before I got knee deep into this wonderful world of people so, so just to be clear you 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 hated it but you gave it a shot and the live experience and then meeting the community kind of locked you in locked completely it was just like beyond uh seeing it and just I think it had always been intrinsic in me because Hair, honestly, is my favorite musical. Mm-hmm, and that, mm-hmm. and it's nothing but New York community and experiences and differences and accepting and loving everyone. And this show was the modern version of that for me. I get Because again, I guess the first song that I ever saw was Seasons of Love. And you can't mm. help but cry. <laughs> Right. As seasons of love and I was done. Like literally, right. I was done. Great. So. I want to go um around a clock on my screen. So next up is Melissa Poston. So for me, it was the Tonys. Um, I hadn't actually even heard of Rent until I saw it on the Tonys, and I was like, what in what is happening here? Um, so <laughs> And I was living in New Jersey at the time, but I wasn't actually spending a lot of time on Broadway. I'd only seen two Broadway shows, maybe three at, till, at that point. And I was in my, tw- like my, my early twenties. Um, so I hopped on AOL cause I was like really into AOL and I found the message boards immediately. And I started talking to people and I met Josh Safran pretty fast mm-hmm. uh, and a whole bunch of other people. And didn't actually make it up to the show until maybe two months later. And there was, it was unexpectedly cold that night. So we were freezing because we were newbies and I didn't bring anything. You know, I learned very quickly, like by the time I was there for the second time, I had a special sleeping bag. I had, you know, I had like all the gear, but that first time it was really cold so that like my primary memory of waiting online is how freaking cold I was oh, yeah. um but the whole original cast was in mm. um everybody down to the you know every single person so that and it just I mean it just knocked me away I was on the very left hand end of the front row um and yeah in a lot of ways it just changed everything Cyber Melly, which is the only way I can refer to you, you're, you're next. So I have an interesting story too. I was in high school finishing my senior year when Rent opened, I guess, at New York Theater Workshop and then quickly transferred to Broadway that spring. And as part of school in our government class, we had to dis- subscribe to Newsweek. We were like forced to or something. And so we got the Newsweek issue where Rent was on the cover. And I was like, this is really cool cool this show and I didn't know anything about it I had seen plenty of Broadway shows but we kind of I lived on Long Island with my family grew up there and so we'd see a Broadway show every year but it was like a big event we didn't go into the city all the time we went in like you know once or twice a year for a Broadway show so I immediately decided based on the Newsweek cover that I needed to see it then found out that it was impossible to get tickets harassed my parents for months and months. Like TK, I got the recording as soon as it came out. I think that was in the summer of 96. And like TK, I hated it. Um, (laughs) I grew up listening to um, things like that. And so then in the fall of 96, a friend of mine um, came home from college. We got together. She saw the CD in my room, said she loved it. And we started playing it again. And I don't know what it was. It was just, you know, it was six months later. She loved it. We listened to it a few times and I became obsessed with it. So then I harassed my parents some more because it was still impossible to get tickets. I didn't think to look online at the time, I guess. I, I barely had AOL probably. Um, and 
So eventually they paid to get us tickets to a broker for mm -hmm. myself and my sister. And we got third row, but they, they cost quite a lot. And so it wasn't until I showed up to see that show in early December of 96 that I even knew that camping out or the line existed. And then as soon as I saw that it existed, I started doing it like every weekend because for me, it was a 45 minute train ride. And then when I started college, I actually organized my classes schedule so that I could have Tuesdays and Thursdays <laughs> off because it was easier if you came on a Tuesday morning, you could get there at like 5 a.m. and still see the show that night as opposed to on the weekends where you need to be there for 24 hours or so. Um, yeah, so I wound up seeing the show like 67 times in the course of 96, 97. And- um, Oh, in a year? Yeah. Oh, um, a year wow. and a half or so. So 96, 97, there were a couple of times in there that were significantly later, like a random 2007, 2004. But honestly, if I'm going to be honest, the bulk of those were in 96, 97. As Melissa P was saying, seeing the whole original cast was a big deal. Yeah. And out of those 67 times, I saw the full original cast with no understudies at all one time. Oh no! Wow. So, my first, first little first show, whole show was with the original cast because Ant was out, and then he came back in that next day, which was probably a Saturday night or something. I don't even remember now. But uh, well, that's my wow, story. sixty-seven. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask everybody their number. Fell off the top of um, my head. I had to go look. Wait, I don't know the number. Patrice, what's your story? <laughs> it's it's actually, it's it's like a lot like Cyber Mellies. Um, I had just graduated junior college and I was transferring. I was coming back home to Long Island to go to Stony Brook Theater. Um, and my little sister, Colleen, who all of you guys know, um, said, well, my gift to you for your graduation is uh, I'm going to take you to see this Broadway show. And I was like, how you work at TJ Maxx. <laughs> like, we get there and uh, we rushed the line. We, we slept over and we had no idea how the show would impact us. And it just changed everything. And I experienced it with all these people that I just had a big slumber party with. Yeah. And I was just so moved and I just, I didn't want to go home. So we stayed again. <laughs> <laughs> and slept over again <laughs> and I wanted to experience again and in, and then I was there pretty much every weekend until we couldn't do it anymore because these were my people and I finally found home and community through a show and strangers and yeah. uh, very vacant talking about it because those are still my people today. Yeah. Uh, that's I have, yeah. a similar, <laughs> I have a very similar experience in that my, I mean my sister d had seen it and her New York she was at NYU and NYU so she had an extra ticket they were had they had some student tickets so I went and saw it in late 96 and Anthony was out it was Norbert Leo no Adam was out and it was Norbert on as um as Roger and that was my first rent experience and it just it blew it like blew you know I, I grew up in Staten Island southern satin island so <laughs> extrapolate from that what you will but as a lover of story and a lover of people and a you know and a lover of of experience like seeing this cacophony of experiences like blew my mind open and when I went home I just needed to find more that was sort of the way I am and I found the community online and then I learned about the line and I learned about I got on email lists and I learned uh, who I started to make pen pals and friends and I would see y'all post your oh I saw this 
whatever, you know, and I was 16 and I went to my parents and said, I need to go sleep out on 24th street so that I can see a Broadway show. And they looked at me like I was an alien. Um, <laughs> but eventually I was able to join the line very early in the night. I had somebody waiting for me in the beginning part. And then I was able to like join safely at like four or five in the morning <laughs> for the first time. And then um, later on, I just, you know, I did it more and actually, and then, and then, you know, we all, all that online activity, the, the shared, the shared love that already existed between a group of people when you met, I think we can tell has formed the basis of a couple of <laughs> things in my life now. And so that, it was just so unbelievably formative. And then, um, and then it just like continued. I, Melly, I will never forget my senior prom <laughs> stopping by the line yeah. in the limo these people going what are you doing I said we are near 41st street I know I have friends sleeping <laughs> outside that theater we are stopping there and somewhere <laughs> there is a photo of you in a prom that's me bundled up to sleep out on the street oh my god I have to <laughs> these are my people and so we like bumbled out of the out of the car at like three in the morning and took pictures together it was, it was just it was just so delightful I love that Hi! <laughs> wow that's amazing <laughs> it, uh, I, I was gonna it made me think about how uh I guess for the first show, or what was the longest amount of time you waited in the line before seeing the show? Because oh. when y'all were talking about it, I mine was oh. 36 hours. Mine was 36 <laughs> hours. Patrice and I might have the same one. It was, you know, as Melissa A said, you know, eventually this line went away and that yeah. was partially because it got really out of control to the point where you'd have lines of people waiting for five different shows at once because the line wait got that long. And so as original cast members started to leave the show in the summer of 97 and everyone wanted to be at their last performance, that's when the, the line waits got really crazy. Mm -hmm. So we did a wait of maybe three days for Adina's last show in July of 97. Wow. And again, I, like Melissa A said, after a while it became a sort of thing where everyone there knew each other. So we would yeah. leave and go to a hotel and shower for a while or go to someone's apartment um, because there were, you know, your other, your friend was waiting in line. Um, but yeah, that, I think that was probably the longest that anyone ever waited. Wow. And then was it was long. a week, it was a week after that, that the line was no more. <laughs> And yeah, that was my first line. That was yeah. the night that I was allowed to come because remember I got like some tip from a friend of a family member about when her show was before they were really announcing last shows. It wasn't like a thing they announced the way they announced right, it. Right, right. And so I kind of yeah. be partly responsible for that, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's always, I mean, we knew in April when Daphne's last right. show was too. So right. Like things usually did leak out, but you're right. It was totally unlike today when things like understudies are announced in advance sometimes yeah. and yeah uh you kind of slip in going to a friend's apartment and i bet more than anything it was Catherine's. yes i was gonna say she was just a few years older than us but kind of <laughs> on as, like her kids especially because many of us were new to life in the city and uh, come use her apartment so who we're referencing is Catherine Skidmore, who was sort of like a den mother to all the oh. redheads who were staying on the line. Yeah. Hands up if when you met her and you had had an experience, you'd had like a relationship with her before, like an online like text relationship, she slipped you the OBC opening night bootleg. Oh gosh, I don't even remember, but probably. <laughs> <laughs> <Or both. laughs> I had to ask her afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, we asked her. Because she also sent me the uh, full score because I ended up using this that for um, a cabaret that I was doing back at UNC. Did anybody ever sleep out on a night when somebody pitched a tent? No. Twice. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw the show probably 24 times on Broadway, and I was there twice when two completely different groups of people 
pitched a tent on the sidewalk and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Lampers. <laughs> yeah. came in from Scarsdale. Yeah. I also saw a guy run a cable. He parked his car illegally uh, right, right across from the Nederlander, ran a cable from the battery somehow up like over the street to the sidewalk and plugged in a television so he could watch some sporting event. And I was like, I don't know what you're doing here. This is very strange. <laughs> They're important. I mean, there were definitely just interesting a- experiences. My <laughs> sister once woke up and um, there was a homeless person sleeping in the sleeping bag next to her because it had been abandoned by somebody hey. in the night who went to get food or something like that. I mean, anything went, you know, you can never tough. predict what was going to happen. But it kind of spoke, Melissa, to the universe, uh, hosted to the universality of the mm-hmm. show. Very it's true. The sport, sports fanatic who couldn't be away from his TV to watch the sport which why didn't he just bring it on a radio? But there you go. <laughs> uh, oh my. Uh, so, it's not uh, 1940. I mean, come on. <laughs> that was making me think the other day I was, um, I, I was talking, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I was talking to Nikki James and we were talking about how we would go across the street to excess. To I was just going to ask about excess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> how many minutes, that? how many dollars per minute was that email service in 1996? So was it like I eight believe, to $9 a minute? It was something like we got maybe 10 minutes and it was five to $10. Yeah. Something because like we would run in, it was like Shannon and Nikki and, and like me and Sasha. And we were like, okay, it's my turn pushing them out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, shit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and let's be honest you weren't checking for anything important you were checking the the major domo list to see the list serve to, the list serve to see it wasn't like is there an emergency can anyone because we didn't really all have cell phones either no, no one did. it was have understudies been posted yes <laughs> that's <laughs> i'm telling your friends so that's right. I'm trying to think about the major domo. I'd forgotten about the major domo list, yeah. but to make me th- clicky bitches was a break off. We should explain. Like we defected. <laughs> we defected <laughs> the domo list. Oh my god. Okay, can, can you explain here. clicky bitches? Can I explain it? I don't know, but it goes to uh, Sally Chu and back to Catherine who uh, something happened on Major Domo mm-hmm. on the original mailing list. I don't know what it was, but- Drama was... on an email list? Right. <laughs> no. What? Related <laughs> to play, the theater? or, uh, you know. And so Sally and Catherine started, I want to say it was Sally and Catherine, uh, started another mailing list and invited, I guess, certain people. And then- those certain people invited certain people and it became this massive thing. So if we think about the community that was on just in general, when the die hard die hards got together, it like exponentially grew in terms of what we would do for each other, mm-hmm. when we would do it, what we would do at the drop of a hat for someone that, for some of us, because again, being an out of stater, I got to see you guys once a year, yeah. maybe twice a year, but almost anyone could call anyone else that was on that list and go, Hey, I need this. And like the next day it was done. Yeah. Um, yes. it was, and we were the investigators. So if <laughs> things happen, strange things happen, it started. Clicky bitchers were, and I'm, yeah, were. Um, and the name was a joke because somebody, joke. somebody oh, that's in right. the midst of a flame war said, you know, just a bunch of, you know, people say things. And so yeah. they sort of were like, well, fine, that's, that's what we'll call it, <laughs> you know? And while it was, was you know, the, the list was getting very big and it was, and it was a way of, of having people be able to be, who knew each other well, be in touch. But there is a sort of flip side of, fandom and the list thing and the line thing where it was getting a little bit 
exclusive territory, it, it, you know, to a newbie coming in, we wanted it to be this welcome experience. And I think, like some of you said, like it was almost welcome when the line unfortunately went away because it was really hard for somebody to access that group after a while. Right. It definitely ran its course. Yeah. yeah. And it was almost to the point because you had said, you know, oh, dears, but there are so many people who have in their head that they were the oh, dears. Yes. Or, and so it was really interesting. I love the fact that um, Melissa P has the rent book behind yeah. her because <laughs> one of my best friends is in that book when he was, he and- I'm, a- I'm in that book. Yeah. <laughs> We're sitting on my last, lap. I was married, I was married at the time and my last name is different, but I'm, I'm in the book too. That cool. is awesome. And so, and it's funny because he actually went on to uh, play Mark in one of the tours. I think it was one of the non- That's awesome. One of the non ec tours, but even the non ec tours had to do the whole backstage following whoever character and watching their oh, track yeah. before they did it, which was kind of, which is kind of unheard of for a non ec tour. But I guess if it had the rent stamp on it, it had to have the rent stamp, you yeah. know? So you had to go through the whole process whether or not you were making $100 a week or $2,000 a week. It was a first foray. I mean, this is basic, probably my first fandom before the Harry Potter thing, which is a whole other con. Um, so, you know, um, that whole was new. And as a 16 to 18 year old in all of this, it was um, it was really wild and, and, and formative and formed a lot of the basis of, of what all we do and why Broadway Con is about trying to make things more um, open for people and, and kind of widen the world a little bit. Can we talk about, well, we can talk about that later. I, I was just thinking about like, <laughs> what, did you know there were spe- special seats? Yeah. Uh, mm. The key seat. Were, the key, key seat. seat. Yeah. And things like that. And my first full show was a key seat. Like they, because of the 36 hours, the people in line said, hey, you can have that key seat. You <laughs> the key seat. Had to be what? When Roger, when Mark says, throw down the key, Collins throws down the key. And I can't remember which direction. One of them goes and went into the first two rows. And so you got the key, the key, which ended up being like a piece of paper or or a stash or whatever. And you gave it to the stage manager at intermission and back. And they would give you like an extra Mimi stash or a guitar pick. You usually get to like trade it in like you were at an arcade. So it was a very important (laughs) seat. Yeah. I was only in the key seat one time. Uh, I don't know that I ever was in all of my shows. Um, because I was with a friend who liked to be on the other side for the most part. Um, <laughs> then there were the you, 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 and you seats. I would love for us to take a second and in the, sp- in the spirit of rent and the spirit of uh, uh, people's stories being shared. I'd love to talk for a second about a couple of, of, of the Rent fans of the, of the original crew that we've lost over the years. In particular, in my mind are Sue O'Connor and Joe Lynn Shee, two very um, dear people who unfortunately are not with us anymore, but their stories and their, and their, their lives are still very important to us. So I'm just gonna open it up for, for y'all. I know, Melly, you were so close with Joe Lynn. Yeah, so Joe and I met again off of the Playbill boards, um, mostly because the first time I saw the show after I had made my parents pay a whole bunch of money for scalp tickets was um, going to be a show with a lot of understudies because we knew in advance that Adina and Tay were on vacation that week. And so I was posting feverishly on the, the Playbill board complaining about the fact that my first show was going to have understudies. And Joe had been around theater much more often than me she grew up in the city going to school just a few blocks from Times Square and had seen tons of understudies in her life and became very attached to them and so she started messaging me privately saying you know don't talk about understudies that way and that was kind of the beginning of our friendship um, in 96 and Joe passed away about six years ago um, of ovarian cancer but we stayed incredibly close BFFs for the past, you know, 20 years before that. Um, she loved theater, always continued to love it. And honestly, I really credit her and this show for 
changing the kind of life that I have. Like before this, I was on Long Island. I grew up there. I went to the city maybe once a year. I didn't know a variety of people. I knew upper middle class white Long Island people. Um, and now my life is completely different. It opened up so many doors. I've done crazy stuff like fly to Japan by myself to like meet up with some friends, things like that, which I would have never done had I not gotten into rent, gotten into theater, met such an incredible variety of people through it. So. Um, Sue was amazing. We were the, uh, I was gonna say the matriarchs, but that's not true. We were just <laughs> part of the older crowd, say the least. We were at the upper end of, I guess, what was acceptable to be hanging out on the lawn <laughs> with the people who were 16 at the time. You were 25 yeah. at the time. Yeah. Right? 25. Yeah. Very old. I, yeah. And, and she might have been 26. Mm -hmm. But she definitely, after a while, she's like, I, I, I'm too old for this. <laughs> like, y'all can sleep out. I'll just buy a ticket or something like that because she lived in Chicago and um, would come in and she was just a very calming person unless there were pigeons around <laughs> and then she was yeah. a freak out because she was deathly afraid of birds but especially pigeons and if you know 41st Street near the Nederlander and the, yeah. the Lion King that, nothing but pigeons it was like and it seemed like if Sue was going to be there, they knew. And so they would call all of their pigeon friends to come and see the girl who was afraid of them. Uh, but she was wonderful. And she was one of the uh, the people who, um, I think she started some of the traveling to see other shows, like to branch out from just seeing the new New York company, especially after the, the two national tours were going on mm -hmm. and it opened in London mm -hmm. and a couple other places. I can't remember how many places she, Jen Ben, Kat, mm -hmm. and uh, who else? Like Melissa, just flew oh, there's around. another Melissa. Oh, yeah. yeah. Osterwin. Osterwin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many um, Melissa. <laughs> so many Melissas. I don't know what it has to do with this show, but Melissas seem to love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I feel like I made my Joe thing more about me than about her. Um, no. So I want, to, I, want, I no. want the rest of you to share anything about her as well. I mean, Joe was super into Daphne. She was also like our resident photographer. Mm -hmm um she always had a camera with her again this was before digital cameras so you were talking about film and getting film developed she loved to take photos of people on their own without her in them so like like a professional style portrait um so her thing was always um getting particularly in costume during uh the bcefa time actually i want to share with melissa a some of photos in case you want to put any of them Please up do. too for the 25th anniversary i after Joe passed away, I got them all scanned. So I have access to them and you can share those because she has some great photos of the cast that she took um, during those early years. I would love that. Oh yeah, God. Definitely, definitely known for her photography um, by everyone, even the cast, because the other thing mm -hmm. she would do is if she took a great picture of them in costume, she would get it developed and give copies to them as yes. well, which they loved. I remember that. <laughs> Wow. Joe was such a light and seeing somebody knowing that I had this like burning theater passion in me and then seeing somebody who was sort of living it already and was of a similar age she really right. really encouraged that to to come out and like just the way that she would talk about understudies and the way that she would post on the list and it would and it started a lot of other people doing it I saw the show tonight with this understudy here's how this understudy's performance slightly mm -hmm. differs from you know like for instance uh Christine Lee Kelly versus Adina right. and like all that love for all the different mm -hmm. textures that people were bringing to performances really has persisted to the way I see Broadway to this day and now you see that a lot in fandom too yeah right yeah performer. she was totally a pioneer amongst some other people you know totally. like I said she was really into Les Mis when she was 
<laughs> younger because it was literally she would second act it every week. Wasn't her Country username Bell. like Eponine Girl? Eponine oh. Bell. Eponine Bell. 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 Bell from Beauty and the Beast. But yeah, Ebony so Bell. she would cut middle school in the theater district and second act a show virtually every Wednesday matinee, be it Beauty and the Beast or Les Mis. And um, so yeah, she was definitely one of those. Because I mean, before Rent, theater um, stage doors and things like that, there were a handful, we're talking like one yeah. or two people who would do things like that. Um, and really until the show, that wasn't a thing, but she was definitely into it before Rent. Can you talk about one way that, or the way that your participation in early Rent fandom changed your life? So when, when the Rent fandom started, I was, I'm married now, but I was married to someone else. Uh, I was married very young. Um, I only been married a few months when I discovered rent and I should not have gotten married he was a very nice guy but it was one of those like two people from you know unhappy childhoods find each other and decide we're gonna make our own family um and I was really unhappy in a lot of ways and that was that was a big part of it but I was just I was not a very happy person I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life um I was sort of just floundering in a lot of ways and I very early in my rent fandom days met this group of um, mostly theater artists, mostly older than me, who just sort of took me in and opened everything up for me, like just, op just made me feel like I was more than I thought I was and, and gave me confidence that I'd never had and really just helped me grow up in a lot of ways. And I would never have met any of them if it wasn't for rent. And we're a lot of us are still really close today and I'm so grateful to still have them in my life. I mean, it's dual in that at first it was, you know, when you think about what you want to do with your life or where your passion is, of course, you know, I was a musician, I was in a band, I wanted to do theater, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah. I ended up having lots of surgery and couldn't really do that sort of stuff. And that was okay. It didn't even need to happen because for me, going there with my sister and my brother and, and my mom and meeting all these people and this show, it just opened up this world. And I know we talked about that, but all you guys, every weekend, it was like all of a sudden I was less lonely and less lonely. And I know that's very emotional, but for me, it was all of a sudden I could breathe. You know, the second I got off the Long Island Railroad, <laughs> started walking up towards 41st street. It was like, I'm with my people. I I'm calm and I'm happy. And it was the most wonderful year of my life. And we're going to see this amazing show. Yeah. We're going to joke around together. We're going to sing together. And here we are 25 years later, right? I know that if I'm ever lost or if I have joy to share, I can call up Catherine. <laughs> I can go to her house and she'll feed me. <laughs> I know I can call up Eddie or Sasha. <laughs> they will take me to a bar. Justin will probably, you know, serve us a beer. I know I can call up any one of you and you'll listen to me, even if it's for 10 minutes. I'm like, no matter what, I have love for the rest of my life because of a show. Like who knew that, that 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 was going to happen to me and it's still there. And I know for the rest of my life that you guys got my back and this music goal carried me and saved me. Sorry to ramble, <laughs> but it's no, so it's beautiful. beautiful. So. <laughs> <laughs> Melly, do you want to go? <laughs> Sure. Um, so kind of like I alluded to before, I think it just really changed the kind of life I wound up going on to have. Um, I think that had I not been into rent and met such a diverse group of people, I probably would have gotten a job on Long Island, continued to go into the city once a year <laughs> to see a show. Definitely shaped how I think politically. I mean, just you know, it's a completely different kind of existence than I might have otherwise had. I, like I said, I just, I think that my life would have been much 
much smaller. That first trip in December of 96 was my first ever idea of going to New York City and just experiencing this place that truly felt like home, even though I'd never been there before. And it was because this show said, home is the people that you make your home with in your life. Like that's the message that I got from the show. And uh, yes, a diverse amount of people. Um, and it also opened up a, a bunch of opportunities for me. I ended up doing two shows with Darius on Broadway. Oh. One with Jay Rodriguez and everything. And so, uh, and I got invited to Thanksgiving with the Larsons, but I ended up not being able to go. And that's a regret that I will have for the rest of my life. Um, but it's just, you know, the show's, again, it, because it's so much like hair and because I didn't get to see hair on Broadway, getting to see Rent kind of filled that, that void that I have. So community means so much to me and being open to other people and learning from other people. Um, and that, that solidified it, the show and fandom. Because, you know, these are people I'd never met before. Literally drove up, Catherine said, here's the key to my apartment. I have to stay online, but go to my apartment, freshen up and everything. Well, but, I mean, it's, it's strange, you know, kind of intimidating sometimes looking <sighs> black man shows up to this skinny white girl. She goes, here's the key to my apartment. Yeah. All right, I'll see you back here in about an hour or two. Who does that? But no, I do it now. Yeah, now you can do it. <laughs> I do it. I was like, I'm open. I was like, until you prove it wrong, you are a great person. Y'all really said it. I have nothing to add to that. People are your home. The people that you make your home are your home. And yeah, I, yeah. As I said before, a couple things are a couple things are obvious about how fandom <laughs> imprinted on me early but i probably would have been a doctor um <laughs> from staten island living in staten island these days people like to talk about you know rent's an imperfect show and there's there's lots of things you could pick apart that we should and we should talk about and we should criticize art always but the heart the like living breathing heart of rent is its people and is the people that celebrate it and y'all are that for me and this has been such an unbelievable delight. I'm getting emotional. It's been such an unbelievable delight, delight to sit <laughs> and um, reminisce and and refan the flames of having y'all in in our lives. We're always sort of burning in the backgrounds for each other. I want to I want to <laughs> keep going. Um, how about this? I would love to keep going for another 15 minutes if you don't mind, and we can put this in the bonus content. So if you all love hearing these stories, uh, you got to get a little bonus content pass for BroadwayCon, which you can get on BroadwayCon.com, and I'll put up the the, the, the pictures that Melly shares as well in 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 that. Um, so. At, at this moment, we're going to do a little false goodbye to say goodbye to our, our public stream because um, we're running out of time and we have to we have to keep it tight. Um, so if you want to hear more from these lovely people, you got a little bonus pass. All right, let's keep going. Do it. <laughs>